Hi kids! Welcome to our online service that's been produced specially for you. spend some time just lifting up the name of Jesus okay so wherever you are you lift your hands and you tell the Lord Lord I want to lift up your name I want to praise your name Jesus Lord I lift your name on high Lord I love to sing your praises that's right I'm so glad you're in my life so glad so glad so glad I'm so glad you came to save us you came you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my debt to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord I lift your name Okay, how many of you are doing the actions right now? Okay, so we'd like you to join in and do the actions and sing along, right? And if you notice, there's one place which says, I'm so glad you're in my life. So how many of you are glad that Jesus is in your life? Yay. Put your hands up. Yeah, we are so glad that he's in our life. You know, like how we sing for that birthday song. Um, we are so glad God made you, right? So we want you to put your hands out and say, Jesus... I'm so glad you're in my life. Come, let's sing it and say it. Jesus, I'm so glad you're in my life. Okay, so when we sing, I'm so glad you're in my life, we're going to put our hands out and say, Lord, I'm so glad. I'm so glad, so happy that you are in my life. Okay, so let's sing that again. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. Just put your hands out. So glad, Lord. I'm so glad you came to save us. On the cross you saved us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on higher than any other. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yeah, Lord, lift your name, God. We are so glad that you are in our lives, God. Hey everyone, welcome to another week of Kids Online Service. Hope you all had a blessed week. Children, we have been learning about obedience, following God's instructions and also how to obey the will of God. Today, we are going to learn a little more about it. Before that, can you see children what I have in my hand? A chocolate. I love chocolates. And I know many of you love chocolate too. You know, I was given this chocolate and was told not to open them until everyone in my family is back home. So we can eat them all together. I agreed to this and said that I will definitely obey the instruction. 
but you're not children. How difficult it is for me to do that. I'm holding this chocolate in my hand and I look at them. I cannot eat it. Two thoughts are going on in my mind continuously. One voice says, eat it. No problem. No one will bother. And the other voice says, don't do it. Don't disobey. It's just like this game of tug of war. Tell me children, have you ever played tug of war? I have Ronald and Anand with me who will demonstrate this game. It's really a fun game. You might have enjoyed. Now there are two teams who stand on either side of this row. And the goal is to pull the member of the opposite team to the right side. Just like this. But you know what? For us to make choices, it's similar to this row. Sometimes we can feel that we are caught right in the middle of this tug of war. Right? It's like you're being pulled both the sides. Now this rope is being pulled back and forth by our own choices. Sometimes it gets so tough to make the right choice. And then to do what is right, always it's so difficult. I know there is a story I remember, a man in the Bible who was just like this. Let me tell you his story. Oh, but before that, let's go on play together. Let's close our eyes and pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day. This is the day you have made for us. We rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you for this week that you you were protecting us and covering us by, by your precious blood. I pray that we will learn how to be obedient and make the right choices in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Suman mentioned about a person in the Bible who messed up with his choices. Can any one of you guess who that person was? Well, let's get straight into the story now and find out who this person was and what he struggled with. So the Israelites were not following God and so God let their enemies, the Philistines, come in and rule over them. And one day, an angel of the Lord came to an Israelite woman and told her that she would have a son. This son would be very special. He was chosen to protect the Israelites from the Philistines. But he had to obey three things. Number one, he was not to touch anything unclean or dirty. Number two, he was not supposed to drink wine and number three he was never allowed to cut his hair can you imagine children growing your hair so long and never going for a haircut i know by now all of you would have guessed his name right well she told her husband all that had happened and he was really thankful so the woman gave birth to a son and called his name Samson. That's right. He grew with long hair and really big muscles and the Lord blessed him. As Samson grew up, he had great strength. The Bible tells us he was so strong, he was able to kill a lion with his bare hands. One time, Samson killed thousand Philistines with a jawbone of a donkey. <clears throat> Another time, the Philistines tried to trap Samson inside a city by locking the city gates. Samson escaped by picking up the huge gates and walking away. The Philistines got tired of him and were really, really angry. 
they didn't like Samson and Samson didn't like them too. Samson slowly became too confident in his strength and began to do things his own way rather than obey God and follow his way. He chose to do what pleased him and began to follow only some of God's commands. God had a plan to save the Israelites through Samson. He was given great power and strength, but he was really weak in making the right choices and doing what was right. So there was one particular girl that Samson liked. Her name was Delilah. The Philistines noticed that and used this against Samson's. They gave, came to Delilah and offered her a lot of money to find out how to defeat Samson. So Delilah decided she wanted money more than Samson and she made plans to learn the secret of Samson's strength. She tried many ways to learn where Samson gets his strength from, but he did not reveal his secret. Finally, Delilah begged and cried so much that Samson told her the real truth. Cut my hair and I will lose my strength, he said. And that is just what she did. She waited until Samson fell asleep and then she called in a man to shave his hair. When the Philistines came, Samson, he, they captured Samson because he was weak and easily caught. His strength left him completely. His enemies bound him and took him away. They wanted to hurt Samson. They blinded him, put him in chains and locked him in prison. So now kids, this story is not about growing your long hair. So don't grow out your hair like a greasy rock star. It doesn't matter how cool or smart or strong you are or even what your hair looks like. If you don't obey God and do what is right, we cannot fulfill God's plan for our lives. Here's what the Bible says and that's our power verse for today. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8 says, Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Can you all repeat it with me one more time? 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8 says, Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Obedience takes training and training for godliness takes practice. Training for godliness means doing things that encourage you to do to go God's way. Things like reading your Bible, obeying what it says and listening to the Holy Spirit. You know, this kind of training will help you to make the right choices always. And when you mess up, you have to admit it and keep trying. And the good news is that God promises to help you just like he helped Samson. Because at the end of the story, Samson's strength came back and he defeated the Philistine once again. God gave Samson the great gift of strength. He didn't need to exercise or eat healthy foods. All he had to do was obey God. Even when he laid around the house, he got stronger and stronger. But Samson took his strength for granted and he became very weak in obedience. He gave in it to every temptation, big or little. So God wants to use all of us in mighty ways. When we are obedient to God and do what is right, God will use us to do great things through our lives. Okay children, are you ready for a quick activity? Have you been listening to today's lesson? Let's check. I will ask you a few questions and I will want you to quickly type in your answers in the live chat section. Are you ready for your first question? So first one, what was God's 
special purpose for Samson's life? The options are to make Samson king of Israel. Number B, to protect Israel from Philistines. And C, to show Samson's strength. Yes, your correct answer is to protect Israel from Philistines. Question number two. What are the three things God has instructed Samson to keep away from? Not to touch dash, not to dash and to never dash. So your correct answer is Samson promised God not to touch dirty or unclean things, not to drink wine and to never cut his hair. Okay, now number three, who were the Israelites enemies? That's right. The Philistines. Good job on the knowledge check questions everyone. Now I have one last question for you. Do you remember what the power verse was for today? Okay, let me give you a clue. Here are the words jumbled up from the power verse. Can you arrange it in the right order to get the power verse? That's right, it's from 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. It says, physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Children, godliness is obeying and respecting God, which also means living holy and righteous lives. Now that we know what our power verse is, let's use it to do some scripture art. All you need is a book with blank pages, a pen and colors. So let's start. Here we write our power verse which says physical training is good. So tell me what do you think of when you hear the word physical training? Exercise? So let's draw some dumbbells and a jump rope. Yeah, so it says physical training is good but Training for godliness is much better. So when you think of godliness, what, what comes to your mind? Obeying God, holiness, righteousness. So that's why I drew a heart over there. And it's from 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. And then you can color it or paint it or decorate it in whatever way you want. And that's your scripture art. So hope you will use this idea to write down many more scripture verses that you like or that speak out to you. So doing scripture art is a great way to express your creativity while growing in your faith. You can do this during your quiet time or while listening to praise and worship songs. You know God can even speak to you while doing scripture art. So that's it for today kids. I would love to see pictures of your scripture art. Please email it to kidsonline at apcwo.org. Hope you enjoyed today's online service kids. We sure had a good time teaching all of you. Join us again next week to learn more from God's word. Oh hey, do any of you have a testimony to share or a prayer request you want us to pray for? You can write to us at kidsonline at apcwo.org. We'll be glad to hear from you. 
Wishing all those celebrating their birthdays this week a very happy birthday. God bless you. We will be praying for you. See you all again next Saturday, everyone. Bye.